Welcome, Collider fans, to Sunday's edition of Collider Mailbag here on the Collider Network. Uh, I am John Roca, one of your co-hosts for the show today. Very excited to be talking to you and answering some of your questions. Uh, I love doing the show, so it's always great when I get an opportunity to host it. And I'm joined, as always, by one of my favorite people on the planet, one of the funniest men I know, and a gracious, gracious uh, contestant on the Ultimate Showdown, <laughs> my very, very good friend, Mark Riley. You dick. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I'm oh, kidding. Uh, see, people, we are friends. Yes. After the schmo down. That's right. And I will say it was a fantastic match. Of course, Roca such, is such a good man. I, I loved that match that we did. Uh, I won't spoil it, guys. Go watch it. Yeah. Uh, I will say, came down to the last question. Mm -hmm. Look at that. So we'll just leave it there if you guys want to go check it out. Glad right. to be here on Sunday. How's it going, Sinead? It's going pretty great. I'm happy to be hanging out with you guys. I love you guys so much. Thank you, Sinead. Honestly, really do. It's a good crew really here today. I know. Yeah. It feels like good. It. Yeah. All right, what's our first question, Sinead? Jimmy writes, hi, guys and girls. Big fan here from Sweden, whose daily routine is watching all of your shows as soon as I can. My question is regarding re-releases in the movie theaters. Do you think The Force Awakens will get new showings on the big screen before the premiere of Episode Eight? Thanks for taking my question, and keep up the great work. Well, I would say yes. I would think so, because before Force Awakens, came came out some of the theaters I think AMC was one of the theaters that was running all the movies and you could go and buy a ticket for the entire day and watch all the movies so I, I know that happened in numerous cities around the country and probably in the world as well so it would not be surprising if they did that because the movie made 700 something million dollars domestically and obviously billions overseas so it is fan it is something that people want to revisit and it took advantage of the technology that was available which is once again following the legacy of George Lucas who did the same thing with every release he had being in taking advantage of technology that was available at the time so why not do it again and so i think it, i think it's a no-brainer that they would do that and it's not it's a nice way to get a little bit of money i mean they did it when they re-released the edited editions of the original trilogy as well Mark? yeah yeah and, and disney look what they're doing they're doing the, the all the marvel movies when yeah. captain america was coming out um yeah i think they might even do the same thing that you just said like all the prequels all the original trilogy mm. force awakens and even maybe rogue one. Oh wow I mean, yeah I, they might just do all of it so you star wars geeks like me uh, i'll see you there uh we can all sit there and and watch it maybe they'll just do a, a special re-release of force awakens as well maybe mm. even months before oh maybe yeah maybe like maybe next october november leading into it but yeah it's a smart move They're, they want to get the hype back up yeah. and especially for episode eight where we're going to see Luke Skywalker finally. Yeah. I think it's gonna, they're going to build on that. I think there's got to be an extended edition coming. Oh yeah, right? that, I would love an extended there edition. Has to I be. mean, JJ is going to release finally that three disc, um, yes, three D version of the Force Awakens right. where they're, he's finally doing commentary. You jerk, JJ. It's like, <laughs> I got to go buy another one. It's like, why didn't you do that the first time? Oh, yeah, that's right. We're Star Wars nerds. We wow. buy everything. So <laughs> it, I, I I would love an, an extended yeah. edition. I would love to see those deleted scenes back in, but with the effects, like, especially Maz Kanata taking on the Stormtroopers yeah. using the Force. Yeah. So I, wanted, I would love that. So yeah. great call. What's our next one? Tis but a scratch, right? Hey guys, greetings from Germany. What's your favorite or most memorable fighting scene in a movie? As a 90s kid, I have to include Van Damme's final fight in Bloodsport after he got blinded, Jackie Chan's final fight in Drunken Master, Rocky versus Apollo, and Godzilla, Godzilla, Godzilla <laughs> versus Destroyer. For more recent ones, it's gotta be the kitchen fight in Raid 2 and the airport, airport fight in Civil War. And an anime example would be the final sword fight in Sword of the Stranger. Mm. Love all of your shows. Keep up the sweaty, sweaty epic. I bet a lot of you uh, are thinking that I'm going to say Star Wars. Um, so, yeah, Empire Strikes Back, the, <laughs> fi the final lightsaber Nailed duel it. between Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker. That's my favorite all time. But I'm going to go and say this. My name is Inigo Montoya. You oh. killed my father. Prepare <laughs> to die. Love the final sword fight, Princess Bride, when Inigo Montoya finally tracks down the six-fingered man. Oh, yeah. And he gets it and the guy throws a knife. And you think that's the end of Inigo Montoya, but he keeps fighting and he gets it because he has the revenge. He's avenging his father's death at the hands of the six finger man. And it just keeps going and, and he keeps saying it. And so yeah. there's that humor. There's the great sword fighting. I, I just love that so much. It made me think of it right away with this question. That's a great question because like there's so much more involved. It's not just the aesthetics or the technique of the fighting. Yeah. It's the emotion that was involved in that film that built to it believably, yeah. even with all the kind of weird humor in the film, 
that moment is so tender and pure. Mm -hmm. uh, it's so, so fantastic. Those are great choices. I, unfortunately, my heart's a little more harder in that way because I chose the Kill Bill Volume 1 Ooh, nice. fight between Uma Thurman and all those people yeah, in that. That's and, a great with one. the crazy 88s. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's one of my favorite fight scenes because the 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 choreography of that is insane the the commentary he's making about the gore and blood and all that is good and he finds the beats with the little with the characters with the girl with the swinging oh, yeah. uh, ball of razors right and then the the guy with the bolt and then at the end where she where she spanks the kid on the on the butt and tells him to go home and go back to school and then she fights Oranishi which is also a fantastic fight. Mm. I think well I think I could add the Karate Kid fight at the end oh, hell for yeah, emotional man. value. I think that's a good little fight. You don't see it coming. The crane technique. Now of course obviously you it, we've had so many years away from the film. You could break it down a little bit. But in 1984 when I was in the theater watching it, I lost my mind when he did that crane kick. Even though he's totally telegraphing it, I still lost my mind seeing it. Um, and I would say that one other one is 300. Man, that fight in 300, uh, right near the middle, where you really think they have a chance to win, and they're cutting them down, all, and then they push them off the cliff. My word, that's one of the, some of the best filmed fight choreography I've ever seen, and for emotional resonance as well. So powerfully to yeah. bring that uh, com that graphic novel to life so well. Good choices, man. Yeah. What's our next thing? Adam writes, hello, Collider. Since Doctor Strange will most probably visit multiple realities in the film, would you love to see a scene where members of the Avengers, such as Iron Man and Hulk, get killed? Thanks and keep up the good work. Uh, yeah, I think I would actually to explore something like that. I think that's taking advantage of what Doctor Strange can do, and you can play with storylines from the comic books, right? Yeah. You can add little scenes, little moments that they've done now with numerous movies where they add lines or scenes from other graphic novels that involve these characters and throw them in the movie. You've seen this happen already on both sides, DC and Marvel, so why wouldn't they do this? And this is a great way to possibly open an alternate reality type thing where you have this whole, all these characters playing out different versions of themselves and seeing how this plays out. And so to me, I think it's a no-brainer that they could do it. Will they? I don't know, but they could, and that'd be awesome. Mark, what do you yeah, think? Yeah, and they kind of teased it in uh, Age of Ultron. Yes. When uh, kind of Scarlet Witch uh, altered the reality of, of Tony Stark, and he sees kind of a vision of what could be. Yeah. So, and I love that idea, too, because it's a comic book movie, so we can play around with that. Mm -hmm. And especially Doctor Strange. That's what the man does. Yeah. So he could do it, and it could be an interesting, dramatic effect to it. We could yeah. see an alternate reality where uh, one of our beloved Avengers dies, and then it could be a rug pulled out from a new kind of moment, and yeah. then we realize, oh, my God, it's actually you know, Doctor Strange, of uh, an alternate reality. Right. So, oh, thank God. Or, <laughs> or it could be, you know, a reset of the, the Marvel Universe as they get forward. We've talked about this yeah. a number of times, how we could see a reset where they could reboot the the new Avengers for whatever reason Absolutely. using these techniques that Doctor Strange might have or even Scarlet Witch. So. Yeah, and you could you could even see reboot like you see if you could even see a female Thor. You can make yeah. that work or yeah. Miles yeah. Morales or whatever. Yeah. Like all of that can I exist. That. I, I yeah. hope they do Miles sooner or later. Yeah. Miles is such a great uh, character. So. Absolutely. Sinead, what do you think? Would you um, this? Yeah, this sounds amazing. Yeah. And I feel like if you're gonna do it, you go big. You kill like the most beloved characters because just just to even see that would be such a shock for fans. Yeah. Right. It would pull at every heartstring, yeah. and I would be so down to see that, just to know that it was fake, obviously. Right. Yeah. Not yeah. fake, but you know, another reality. But I think, yeah, if he has the ability to do and you can make it work and make it believable and realistic, right. go for it, make a huge, I think it'd be awesome. Yeah, yeah. it'd be great. Yeah. All right, what's our next question? Ryan writes, hello, Collider crew. I love the show and watch every day. I finally watched Oliver Stone's JFK for the first time, and I thought it was just okay. Please don't get too angry, Ellis. Lucky for you, he's not here. <laughs> I read something about the film that I found interesting, though. It was, 2000, it was a 2013 interview Stone did a few years ago in which he agreed that JFK suffered at the Oscars due to its controversial nature. I went back and looked at the Oscars that year, and the big winner was Silence of the Lambs, a film with its own type of controversial content. So my question is this. Do you think that Stone was right in thinking that his film lost due to its content or did the Academy choose correctly? And a side question, can you think of another time that the Academy got it right even though people complained about the outcome? Thanks and keep up the great work. Wow, that's a great question. Uh, with all due respect to Oliver Stone, I think the Academy got it right that year. Mm -hmm. Silence of the Lambs, I'm sorry, is one of the best movies yeah. uh, ever made and sure, controversial, but it was bold of the Academy to choose Silence of the Lamb as oh. best picture. And that, that was a clean sweep, too. Actress, actor, director, writing, and uh, best picture. Yeah. So we're talking, it, they got it right. 
is JFK a bad movie? By <laughs> all means, no. It's a fantastic movie. One of my favorite Oliver Stone movies. I don't think the controversy weighed on that at all. I think the the Academy would have if there was no Silence of the Lambs. I think JFK probably would have won. Yeah. And but it was such an interesting way to go at Silence of the Lambs. Now I can't really think of anything where the Academy got it right. I think of another film that won Best Picture where I thought they got it wrong because of somewhat of a controversial nature to it, and that's mm -hmm. Crash. Mm. I did not like Crash at all. Yeah. I thought it was pandering to its audience. I thought it was pretty obvious. I thought it was very, very, here's the message over the head. Yeah. And while somewhat controversial in the, t in the, um, the content of the movie, yeah. I think that's what they relied on to give it a Best Picture Academy Award. Yep. I don't remember. I want to say Brokeback Mountain was the same year, but yeah, I can't angry, remember. Yeah, yeah. Was it? I, I can't remember, was. but that would... Brokeback Mountain should have won Best Picture mm -hmm. over anything out there. I, I'm probably... I'm going to look that up. Yeah, Roka, look, what do you think? Okay, so here's my here's my thing to uh, Ryan. Ryan, A, I understand if JFK doesn't hold for you, hold up for you. Now, it is. I, have, I It's one of my favorite films I remember of Oliver Stone's, and I had bought every version of it, including Blu-ray. Uh, I think it's a really well done exploration of this possibility of a conspiracy. Now, are you asking me, do does did this affect them him winning an Oscar? No. The film itself is a good film and if it had been if it had been in maybe in another year, like maybe the crash year, it yeah. would have won best picture. Yeah. Uh, but the thing is that Silence of the Lambs was such a juggernaut coming out. It's such a tight taut film. You can still rewatch Silence of the Lambs and enjoy it. You can if you rewatch JFK, you see some moments that are really dated where Oliver Stone's manipulating you, especially this is mm. his basic Kevin Costner relationship, which Ooh. is che bordering on cheesy at times. Yeah. And you can accept that. I think I'm not surprised though that Stone said this because Stone is a conspiracy person. This is what he's built his career on doing is claiming there are conspiracies everywhere he goes. Yeah. And that's unfortunately the, uh, the downfall of this film. So don't, I don't buy anything that Stone said at all about the film. I think the Academy got it right. Your second question, is there a time they got it right and people complained about the outcome? Yes, Shakespeare in Love. And I will fight to the death about that. I love Shakespeare in Love. It is a fantastic film. As a fan of Shakespeare, it just has something in it that is magic and perfect, and it's one of these smaller films that had a right to beat a Steven Spielberg juggernaut that at times falters in the second half of the film. To me, Shakespeare in Love is fantastic from beginning to end. There are no plot holes, no flaws. It's It knows its content. It's winking at its content at the same time that it's respecting its content. And that's a very difficult line to walk. Private Ryan is great in the first 30 minutes, maybe the first hour, hour 15, and then it starts to fall apart because Matt Damon is an unwilling participant in being saved. And mm. that kills it for me. That's that. Uh, yeah, I can get behind that explanation, oh, okay. especially with Shakespeare in Love. I think I love the movie. Yeah, I was. Yeah, I was. I was a little shocked, and I wanted Saving Private Ryan. I don't necessarily agree with you on Saving Private Ryan. I mm -hmm. think it holds up. I love the movie, but to take away from Shakespeare in Love and say it didn't deserve it. Yeah. No, 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 no. Shakespeare yeah. in Love did deserve it. Um, and and going back, yes, Brokeback Mountain was nominated oh. the same year as Crash. Should have won. They Absolutely. got it wrong. I think they I think they were scared of the mm -hmm. content of Brokeback Mountain and gave it to what I feel is a very safe Crash. Absolutely. Because of what they were trying to tell in that story. Yeah, so. they're trying to say everybody's okay. Everybody's fine. We yeah. we just need to get along and have conversations. That's Absolutely. not true. Yeah. yeah. All right. What's our next thing? Ben Sorry. writes, Hi Collider Crew. Big fan here. Been watching since AMC Spoilers review for Man of Steel. Here's my question. What's your top three movie trilogies? Here's my Mine from best to worst. One, Back to the Future. Two, Star Wars 4 through 6. And three, Captain America. I'm very curious to hear your answers. Keep up the good work. P.S. I'm on Team John and Ken for Star Wars Schmodown. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Uh, is it mine? Don't this one? Go, okay. go to you, man. Okay, I will say Toy Story is number one. Mm. The the original three Bourne series before this new Jason Bourne one and that Jeremy Renner one came out, I would say that's two for me. Mm. And three is... <laughs> Begrudgingly, I mean begrudgingly, I say Lord of the Rings. Begrudgingly, even Why though begrudgingly? I, even though I have issues with the film, hey, I'm looking at it. Even though I have issues with the film, sometimes the films themselves, sometimes you cannot deny the uh, technical masterpieces they are and the emotional resonance those films have with people who go to see them. I I have had battles on the top ten show about my preference for the Hobbit trilogy over the Lord of the Rings trilogy, but. I cannot deny Lord of the Rings trilogy deserves a ranking in the top three trilogies. So. Thought you were going to say Transformers. No, I really yeah. did. Right? <laughs> really, well, that's really That's still going. Did. That's going to be a quadrology. What? <laughs> well, all right. For for my favorite trilogies, uh, well, obviously the Jaws trilogy. <laughs> 
I'm kidding. <laughs> Sinead, I, I got Jaws in there. Yeah, I know. That's our, I that's was waiting for it. <laughs> I really was. When, when we talked about fight scenes, I was like, how is he going to make Jaws? <laughs> I know. Work for well, this answer. Well, yeah, the Quint fighting Jaws at the end totally. is one of the best fight scenes ever. Um, <laughs> Kicking the nose. Yeah. Yes. Uh, no, no, Jaws. God, no. Uh, Beth, I'm going to agree with you on Toy Story. Yeah. That's one of my favorite trilogies. I'm going to start first, uh, obviously, Star Wars. The original trilogy is my right. number one. Number two would be Lord of the Rings. I love Lord of the Rings. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't, I can't get behind you on that one, Roca. I think they're amazing movies, mm -hmm. including the extended editions. I will watch the extended editions every single time yeah. and just, just sop up every single moment. I love it so much. Toy Story uh, trilogy would probably be my third. And then um, Back to the Future is in there somewhere. You really like the, the second one? I do. Interesting. I do. Okay. I love it. I think it's a sign of the times where mm. uh, the age I was in where mm -hmm. I love that they went to the future. I yeah. love that there was an alternate timeline. I love they had to fix all that and yeah. then to go back to 1955 and Marty McFly had to avoid himself. Right. I thought it was genius. I loved it. Um, and a lot of people don't really like part three. I loved the Western. Yeah. I loved... Um, Little, I, I didn't like it as much. I love two more than three. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one being an absolute classic. Right. Um, but yeah, I, I would say that's in there. And then the before um, trilogy, R uh, Richard Linklater, oh. before sunrise, uh, before yeah. sunset, before sunrise, and before midnight, right. are the most beautiful movies. So well done. Each one of them deserved an Academy Award for Best Picture and Best Actress and Best Actor. I love those so. So you, so we actually were top three, and you gave five. I gave so many. You're so, and you're so smart about now, about movie stuff, Riley. Yeah, oh yeah. No, I didn't include Star Wars or Captain America because he had listed it, but I would oh, put yeah, those yeah. in two and three absolutely for me because yeah. I think because you can take stuff away from those other ones. Oh, uh, Sinead, what about you? Um, so I have Captain America. Yes. Uh, yeah. The Dark Knight, and then I have Toy Story. Actually, really don't know my order. Um, I have slight issues with the second Toy Story movie for some wow. reason. Wow, really? Yeah, mm. but overall, overall, I really like it. I just for some reason I could not. Is it Jesse? Or is it the going against Zorg or whatever? I just I don't know if I just be, I didn't believe the storyline as much mm. in the second one, okay. whereas the first one is incredible and the third one is <laughs> yeah. fan freaking tastic. Yeah, it's my favorite of it's, all of them. Yeah. Right, and that's Agreed. crazy to say that a third movie yeah. can be your favorite out of out of a trilogy that. Um, that classic right but for some reason that second one is is just it falls flat to me a little bit and then mm. also um with a close runner-up being uh the born series it was like the yeah. first the first franchise first action movies that mm -hmm. i really found myself really interested in and i love them mm -hmm. i would have included star trek two through uh two through what, two two three and four mm. i would have included that except three at times is a bit meandering is not as strong so i couldn't put it in there yeah all right what do we have next today Christopher writes, all right, so it finally arrived. Jordan Peele has made his directorial debut with Get Out. I'm sure many people may be confused why someone so associated with comedy would direct such a bizarre but awesome-looking horror movie. I'm actually in the movie during that deer scene from the trailer, Whoa. as long as they don't cut me out. <laughs> I got to see him direct, and I got to say, he has a great talent in directing, and I think we will all be surprised with that movie. My question is, what is the biggest departure you have ever seen an actor take, whether it's a comedian doing something serious or vice versa? Oh man, great question. And to comment on Get Out. You when, watched the trailer, right? Did you yeah. talk about that at some Oh point? yeah. When that trailer came out, uh were you there, Sinead, too? I No, I watched it at mm. home, but I was curious. I would have to see what you guys all thought about a movie talk. My mind was like blown. I was like, what the hell did I just watch? <laughs> I I couldn't believe it. Perry starts watching it, and I, when I hear Jordan Peele directing this and I'm listening to it off to the side, I'm mm -hmm. like, I'm waiting for the jokes. Right. I'm waiting for it to be like like a, a horror movie with jokes, like something maybe a, a Damon Wayne's The Wayne's Brothers would do, right, right, right. which was so unfair to you, Mr. Peel. <laughs> I'm so sorry because then I watched this thing and I'm like, oh my God, I can't wait for this. Yeah. And he is doing something very interesting here. It's a horror movie. It's a horror thriller movie, uh, and he's and he's talking race relations mm. here. He's talking something deep here. Yeah. I love it. Shocking to me that he did it. Not surprised though. I mean, I think he's. Th this makes a lot of sense to me. So to answer your, finally, to answer your question, I always go to, to Robin Williams um, because he oh, was yeah. known for, for comedy and then he comes out and he does these wonderful dramas. Yeah. Um, and then it just wasn't so shocking. By the time we got to Good Morning, uh, uh, well, Good, Good Morning, Morning Vietnam, yep. but Good Will Hunting, yeah. I wasn't shocked that he won. But I'll say Ben Affleck is one of those that also shocked me with his directing. Mm -hmm. And then as he's moved forward as an actor, he is so good. The town is where I finally mm -hmm. went, 
wait a minute, not only is such a brilliant movie directing wise, his performance is one of the best I've ever seen. So yeah. that's those are mine. Uh, I've got three. Uh, Adam Sandler in Punch Drunk Love was yeah. one of the most amazing revelations I've he ever seen great. as an actor. He, I miss that Adam yeah, Sandler. Yeah, he was heartbreaking. He was so uh, childlike in his innocence and also the anger he displayed with his uh, bipolar disorder that yeah. he was experiencing. Like, it really unsettled you. And you didn't know that was capable within him, you know? And it wasn't done in a comedic way. It really was, at times, done in a very scary way. And it was believable. Jim Carrey in Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, also fantastic stuff. No one saw the guy talking out of his butt in Ace Ventura doing this incredibly multi-layered performance in a fantastic film by Michel Gondry, uh, written by Charlie Kaufman. It really broke your heart and happened. And if you've been in a relationship that has fallen apart and you watch this film, there's no way you're not devastated by the end of it by the, yeah. because of the work they're both doing, him and Kate Winslet. And, and looking at actresses, Meryl Streep and Death Becomes Her blew my mind. I had no idea this woman who had done these very serious, dramatic films like Sophie's Choice and what have you uh, could come in uh, and do something like Death Becomes Her and hit every comedic note so well. And I just so much enjoy her in that in that film. And those are the things that like I, I didn't see that come. Like I did not expect that from them. Mm. Yeah. Mm. All right, what do we have next? All right, Diaz writes, Hi, Clyder, love the show. With Disney announcing release dates for live action remakes, uh, or for the live action remake of Mulan, is there any possibility for a live action remake of Atlantis, The Lost Empire, or maybe even Treasure Planet? For me, both movies are awesome and so underrated, but unfortunately did not do well at the box office. Thanks. Hmm. Is that that's you? Yeah, Rocha? I think that's me. Yeah. Uh, yes, I love both of these movies. <laughs> this was my favorite question when you sent me the questions, yeah. uh, Mark. I was so happy that D Diaz wrote this. And uh, listen, Lost Emp Atlantis is such a great exploration of what they're going to find, what the like the world that they create is so interesting. And Treasure Planet. What a great variation on Treasure Island. What work they did with this. The, the father-son the father -son stuff. Like, there's so much here that you get to explore in both of these movies. I agree. They are criminally underrated. Uh, unfortunately, they do one in the box office. There's no way they're going to turn them into live-action films because there's not already built an audience to come watch it. It would be a miracle. Everything, every property they've chosen to go live-action already has a built-in audience that's a fervent lover of these films in animated form. So I'd be surprised. But... If there's ever a full Disney network, I would not be surprised to see a TV movie or a TV series based on Atlantis, The Lost Empire, and maybe a TV movie on Treasure Planet. What about you, Mark? Uh, you know, with, with these in particular, Treasure Planet, Atlantis, The Lost Empire, um, they didn't land with me mm -hmm. at the time. And just looking at what Disney's doing, I don't think these would be live action right. remakes. If you notice the trend that they're doing, they're going after the biggies, yeah. the ones that are the Beauty and the Beast, the Lion King now. Uh, Mulan is even going there. I mean, you know, Little Mermaid's in development. I I'm think. sure. Yeah. I think it, it is, right? Um, yeah. I always get confused because Universal has one too that's yeah. based on the Hans Christian Andersen book. So I think they're targeting those first. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we might ultimately get a Snow White version. Yeah. I know Universal did one. Was Disney's mirror? Was that Mirror Mirror Disney? I can't remember. Um, oh, I don't. Which remember. was kind of a. Yeah. But, but a straight up, I mean, they did Cinderella. They mm -hmm. kind of did Sleeping Beauty well, with they did Maleficent. Maleficent. Yeah, you know, yeah. Right? So that was a different take. But now they're like Maleficent didn't really do that well. So right. then yeah. they kind of changed it up and did straight up Cinderella, which which is where for me it hit the magic. Yeah, I thought Cinderella was fantastic. Wait, Jungle Book, Jungle, Jungle Book, great yeah, too. Jungle yeah. Book. So. Yeah. You know, are we gonna are we gonna get Robin Hood? I would see live action oh, foxes. Yeah. That would be, be great. <laughs> right? That would be weird. What do you but think? I don't it? know. Yeah. Um, I I agree. Mm -hmm. I think that they're gonna tackle the the big ones mm -hmm. first, um, like your major classics, which we're almost like all the way through if you really think about it. Yeah. Um, Treasure Planet, not so much. But Atlantis, I really, really liked. And mm. I agree, it is actually very underrated. Yeah. Um, they just didn't pop off the way the way I thought, especially Atlantis was going to, because mm. it's such like a different 
storyline too. And can you imagine like a live action of that would mm-hmm. be beautiful? Mm, yeah. If you think about what John Favreau did with Jungle Book and an underwater world, it would yeah. be amazing. So I would love to see that. I don't think that we're gonna get that one right away. But this whole live action Disney thing is not slowing down anytime no. soon. Yeah. Um, people are loving it, mm-hmm. and I think they're gonna get through the the big ones, the big classics. Yeah. But yeah, absolutely, Atlantis would be amazing, and maybe that would get people yeah. on board with the movie. Well, it, and it has that steampunk vibe to it too which kind of kept it a little bit kind of provincial in, yeah, in a yeah. mainstream audience so how would you transfer that across if you made it live action it would right. be fun to watch I think that they could even like i picture a movie like that they could also spice it up with like a really dope soundtrack yeah too, for some reason like i feel like it like i'm in a really dope one like a yeah. really dope one you guys. I, it's like actually like super like totally dope i like, might change my answer on the atlantis oh, okay. thing yeah i because i think if you take that source material and mm-hmm. really do a yeah. good version of it yeah. with awesome. the effects and like yeah great soundtrack i and when i say soundtrack i mean like get a, a great composer to do yeah. some epic kind of music and then maybe you want to steampunk it out and yeah. add some pop culture references yeah. i don't know Absolutely. It, it's a you know we haven't had a big budget atlantis movie i know there's a ton in development but yeah. for disney that might be interesting yeah. i could go with that All right, what's our last question? All right, Brian writes, over the last few years, I've been going through one list after another, IMDb, AFI, Sight and Sound, etc., watching as many classic films as I can. Since finishing the list, I've been without direction on what to watch next. So recently, I've been re-watching some of the films, but I found that I'm mostly re-watching the films that I didn't like because I feel like I must have missed something since it's on one of the best movies of all time lists. Mm. This leads to my question, what are some movies that are considered all-time greats that you don't care for? Some of mine are Unforgiven, Leon the Professional. <laughs> what? <coughs> What's wrong Old with you? Old boy, <clears throat> Annie Hall, Eternal Sunshine, oh. and Chinatown. Brian. Damn, Brian. Oh, oh man. The Eternal Sunshine? That one oh. hurts me. Um, wow. Listen, your results may vary, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> the, results may vary. Yeah, results may vary um, because uh, some of the ones you list are, are hard to hear, but I get it. I totally get mm. it. So I'll go out there first. Okay. And I'll say that... Um, uh, 2001 A Space Odyssey is is not, wow. I'm not crazy about it. Mm-hmm. Wow. I'm not gonna lie, but however, I'm a huge Kubrick fan. One of my favorites is Dr. Strangelove or How uh-huh. I Learned to Love the Bomb. Um, and I, I, I love this. Uh, so I love that movie, I love The Shining, I love Full Metal Jacket, but mm-hmm. for, for, for whatever reason, 2001 is just not, they didn't wow. do it for me. Um, okay. But I can look at it and go, this man is legendary. This He, he reinvented the wheel with it. Um, I can look at all the the merits behind the movie. Mm-hmm. Just didn't land with me, which I'm going to assume Chinatown, <laughs> Eternal Sunshine didn't land with you. Annie Hall, come on, watch Annie Hall again. Right, you might want, you might like it. So I get it. Um, and then results may vary. Some people might call Avatar a classic because of how oh, much, yeah. but you know, yeah. I didn't like Avatar. So I th- that's one off the you top of my you head. You didn't like it at all. I mean, wow. yeah, it's fun. I mean, wow. there's some good, Dang. there's some good, um, you know, action set pieces mm-hmm, and the effects mm-hmm. are, are amazing. But yeah, I just, I was mm. like, why is this thing? I, I, I was stunned every time that movie still was in the number one spot and yeah, yeah, it became yeah. the biggest grosser of all time. I was like, really? Yeah. I saw it once in the theaters and haven't, I watched it again on Blu-ray and I was like, okay. Uh, mm. It just didn't yeah. do it for you. Yeah. Didn't do it for me. What yeah. about you, Sinead? Do you have any classics that uh, don't hold up? Yeah. Being younger than us? I'm sorry, you guys. Like, we talked about this on the show today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, Lord of the Rings. I cannot. Ooh, whoa. I yeah. cannot. Wow. I'm really sorry. I've said no, this okay. before. Wow. I cannot get into those movies. Wow. Like, I just I can't. It's one of those things where I've tried, and it's like, I can mm-hmm. enjoy certain parts of it. Like, at least I've tried. But damn, like, I just, it doesn't hook me. Like, I'm mm-hmm. not like whoa let's watch the next one yeah right. i've never been like that but i don't know what it is about them i just i don't know i just hey, can't get into it results may vary yeah that's, that's what, what i said i get it you're gonna i mean like i got so much crap for not liking mad max fury road i oh. enjoyed the it, my theater uh experience and right. i thought okay it's okay you know yeah it's, it's good yeah. i don't know what people and i mean i got unfollow riley you suck i was like jesus all right <laughs> <laughs> it's the same way that like when I I, when the vacation reboot came on i was like too afraid to tell anybody that i enjoyed it what? And then I re- <laughs> oh my God, i'm unfollowing you <laughs> i loved it and i came in and i was like <laughs> i liked it yeah. <laughs> like, all quiet and dennis was like me too <laughs> i'm unfollowing dennis where's, where's my phone here it goes done 
Uh, Roka, what's you? For me, it's Easy Rider. Everyone seems to love this movie as a classic. I'm I, with you, dude. Yeah, it's boring as hell. It's fine. I don't get it. I don't yeah. get why people love it so much. I'm just like I've watched it four times to try. Four like, times, just like this guy Brian. Who Brian? You have a, ser a lot of blind spots in your love of classic films. I'm sorry for you. Yeah. I, I love you to death. Thank you for writing the question. But you're breaking my heart with some of these choices. Eternal Sunshine. I just can't. Oh boy, I can accept possibly because it's a Korean film. You might not gravitate to it. But Eternal Sunshine. That'll make no sense to me. Oh. Uh, those kinds of American. Graffiti never really did anything really? for me, oh, and I okay. loved Happy Days. I loved yeah, Happy Days, American graffiti, but American I Graffiti, I just was like, mm, okay, those kinds of things. Wuthering Heights didn't do anything for me. Best Years of Our Lives has never done anything for me. Yeah, uh, yeah. Network is all right when you watch it once, but I think we've gone past that point where network really affects me anymore because mm -hmm. we've seen the reality of what can happen already. So it doesn't quite get. And All Quiet on the Western Front, great, uh, awesome war film that people love doesn't do a thing for me. So, oh, yeah. Also, I forgot Jaws. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Nailed it. Boom. Okay. Nailed it. Now, I am, now I'm Just really kidding. unfollowing you. <laughs> That's all right. all right. Results may vary. Send that hashtag <laughs> out to us yeah. and tell us <laughs> what your results may vary, right. and we'll uh, we'll answer. And that's what the great thing is. Part of loving film is the fact that you're not always going to agree. And that's, that's why this is so fun, mm -hmm. so right? much fun. It's a subjective medium. Just because I don't like something doesn't mean your opinion is any less valid or more valid than mine. That's what it is. We all have different experiences in life. Exactly. Yeah. And look at what we're doing. I mean, that's exactly. the reason why yeah. we're right. doing what we do. Because if we liked everything, it'd be very boring for oh, you yeah. all. And e. It really would. And E.T. I, I, knew, like I e. was e. waiting for E.T. I don't e. like E.T. And I've I said this a million, for e. times, a million times. I was wondering when E.T. was going to come out. You son of a bitch, you. <laughs> <laughs> it's so boring. Oh, All my right. God. Anyway, there gonna, we go. I'm going to force I'm going to do the Clockwork Orange thing. And I'm going <laughs> to make you watch that open. thing. All right. All right. Thanks. Let's wrap this up. All right. Everybody, <laughs> thanks so much uh, for your questions. We always appreciate them. Please keep sending them in so that we can answer them here on the Collider Mailbag. And you always challenge us to do the work, do the research, and kind of explore our own thoughts on this, which is so much fun. Uh, but let's thank everybody. Let's go around the table. Uh, Mark, where can everybody find you? Great point there, too, yeah. Roka. Yeah, I love looking at these questions and then you know you, you teach us something new every time yeah. so thank you uh find me at riley around on twitter and instagram on tuesday i'll be on collider nightmares and on thursday the schmoes no main show and i'll be back here next sunday and shanae DeVries. hi guys um tomorrow i'll be on collider uh tv talk i almost said movie talk tv talk monday <laughs> catch us at five and then on friday i'm back hosting movie talk and then back for uh mailbag over next i can't talk whatever <laughs> I'm, done. I'm done you guys jaws I'm done. jaws <laughs> done <laughs> uh all right guys you can always find me at the roca says r-o-c-h-a you see it right there i think yeah there right there you go uh and uh listen uh wednesdays 5 p.m pacific standard time the top 10 show here on the collider network uh the cinephiles which is my podcast about breaking down a classic film uh before the year 2000 with my film professor friend steve morris we just did la confidential in honor of the passing of curtis hansen oh. which was so much fun to talk about and revisit that film yes. and also my new show on geek and sundry super animation game time Every Wednesday at 1 p.m. on the Twitch channel, Yuri Lowenthal and I uh, discuss or, or interview somebody in the world of animation, uh, video games, and voiceover and comics. There you go. All right. All right. Thanks so much. And thanks, everybody, again, for watching us here on the Collider Mailbag. We will see you all next time here on the Collider Network. Hey, guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.